Jason, and good day to you. So you see, Carol, pumpkins aren't just for Halloween anymore. No, it can serve many functions in your holiday plans. Just think outside the box, and your pumpkin can become a beautiful punch bowl at your family parties, or a totally organic cooking vessel for your favorite green bean casserole. <laughs> well, I could go on and on and on. <laughs> Of course you could. Did I mention how inexpensive a pumpkin is right now? Yes, you did. Several times. <laughs> and it's all so, so fascinating. <laughs> but I'm afraid that's all the time we have for today. We'll see you again on Good Day to You. I'm your host, Carol Jordan. Carol, great show again today. Perfection as always. And Jane, thanks for being with us again today, okay? No, oh, it was my pleasure. Hey, can I get you to sign your release, please? Marcy, just a minute, just a minute. Here, no, Carol. Just, it's something is stuck, it's, it, it's strangling me. I, I got it, hold on. Just, I'm just trying to help you. Just get this off of me. Okay. Right, right here, here. Uh, if you take that, and there you go. Thank oh. you. Oh, who handles these things anyway? Well, it's normally Eddie, our sound guy, but he left last week. That's right, he got a better job someplace else. <laughs> I can't imagine why. Will you be a doll and get me that double latte? Sure thing, Carol. The, the cafeteria is featuring a holiday special today. Peppermint cinnamon. What do you think? <laughs> right, and I'm in a hurry, so. Shoo! Glamour of it all. And if I could just get your John Hancock, you'll be all set for your vacation. Great. You pulled all of my old tapes from the video library? We're all set for your Christmas vacation. It's going to be a full week of your old Christmas tapes. Oh, perfect. I am so out of here. You deserve it, Carol. Because, you know, not everybody can do what you do. You flatter me, Jared. <laughs> Marcy! Poor Marcy. We're not paying that girl enough money. You know, I could do what Carol does. Why don't you ever give me a chance? Well, you're already on camera, Katie. Doing public service announcements. Jared, I could do so much more. That's what we need you to be doing for us right now, okay? A minute of community updates once every hour? That's what you signed on for, Katie. Look, I understand your frustration, but not everybody starts at the top. You gotta work your way up the ladder, right? I had a feeling you'd say that. His Royal Highness, Prince Jonathan Wentworth. Your Royal Highness. Yes? I... 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 Uh, please, there's no need for that, thank you. Yes, Your Highness. Uh, if you could, just stamp my passport. Yes, of course. No, no, uh, not on my face. From Vesaria to... Ooh, America. How exciting. Thank you. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <sighs> this whole trip to America feels like a giant waste of time. Well, I know that right now you don't think it's important, sir, but I can assure you it is. Lewis, it's just another ribbon-cutting, head-nodding, hand-shaking event. Any of my cousins could have officiated it. I'm sorry, sir, but wasn't it you that said that you couldn't get out of his area quickly enough? Well, yes, but that was simply because of all the silly nonsense that my mother keeps promoting, having a fiancé and soon to be married. Oh. And nothing could be further from the truth. No, I have absolutely nothing against Rosalind, but we hardly know each other. I certainly didn't ask her to marry me, had that discussion, or anything of the sort. Well, then perhaps when we return home, you can make extra effort to try and set the record straight. I'd be doing that right now if you weren't dead set on this trip. 
sir. You were dedicating the United States Naval Museum in the name of your maternal grandfather for his noble services with the Allied forces during the last great war. The story of which you wrote of in splendid detail throughout the entirety of your new book. Currently, it was area's number one bestseller, I might add. Please, don't remind me. And I don't understand what the urgency is all about. Why are we doing this during the holidays? Sir, the timing of the dedication is significant. It was at Christmas time back in 1943 that your grandfather's actions were most legendary. Or, so your book says. Mm. It's very astute of you, Louis. <laughs> Just don't understand the importance of me being there. Nobody hardly knows who I am or even recognizes me anymore. Hey, Marcy. Hey, Katie. Thanks for helping out with that microphone. Oh, yeah, I mean, those things can be an octopus if you don't keep them untangled. And we all know Carol can be a little impatient. That's an understatement. I don't know why they put up with her. She can be so rude sometimes. Ratings, Marcy. It's all about ratings. You'd be better hosting that show. Thank you. I would love that, but they won't even give me a shot. Why not? You're perfect on air. The viewers love you. Try telling that to Jared. Keep begging him to let me do something more important, but he's not having it. He could make it happen if he wanted to. He is the program director. Yeah, the boss of all bosses. <gasps> Marcy. <gasps> The idea was for you to order the latte and then bring it to me. Sorry, Carol, I, I was on my way, but I, I just got sidetracked. We're running the best of Carol Jordan starting Monday. Oh, of course. Yeah, I heard you were going on vacation next week. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yes. <laughs> Don't miss me too much. <laughs> okay. I'll catch you later, Marcia, right? Bye. Bye. Hey, Jared. You wanted to see me? Yes, actually. I was thinking about what you said earlier about wanting to do something more meaningful with your time here. Yeah, and? And I just got this. And with Carol on vacation all next week, I have no one available, so I thought you might... Oh, yeah, I'll take it. <laughs> You don't even know what it is yet. Oh, it doesn't matter. I don't care. That's the attitude. Listen, the museum is opening a new exhibit dedicated to World War II veterans. One of the sponsors is the Kingdom of Vissaria, and they're sending this Prince Jonathan as their representative. Uh, he's going to be at the big Christmas preview party. I just want a total fluff piece, okay? Nothing negative, all right? Yeah, no, I could totally do that. Um, I wouldn't be so sure about that. He's declined every attempt at an interview. All the other stations have practically given up at this point, and that's why I want it even more. I see, okay. I'll tell you what, you get that interview, and you've got your special. Deal? Deal. What are you waiting for? Okay, okay, yes. Question. How would I locate him? Well, you don't find pearls on the shore, Katie. If you want one, you gotta die for it. Got it. Okay, I will do that. Thank you so much, Jared. I won't let you down. Marcy. Yeah. How busy are you? Nothing major, just completing the morning program log. Perfect. I need you to come with me. Right now? Yeah, right now. Sorry, Larry, can you finish these? Sure. Okay, where are we going? To the airport, come on. Oh. Keep the camera rolling the entire time. You never know what we'll be able to use later. I just don't understand why you didn't ask one of the regular camera guys for this. I brought you because I trust you. Marcy, this is my big break. I just want to keep it to myself for now, okay? Okay, you're the boss. Let's go. How will we know if they have the right flight for the prince? I made a few calls. Turns out there's only one flight arriving from Vasaria. One flight today? One flight this year. Oh, I know. Oh. Yes, of course. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you. So they've taken our luggage to a special holding area where we can then dispense with formal customs inspection, sir. 
The longer we linger, the more there is a chance of someone noticing me. flights, of course. Yeah, this way. <laughs> How will we know him when we see him? The jacket, the coat of arms, that's gotta be him. Yeah. I thought that you said no one recognizes you anymore, sir. Here, get the camera on him. No, I said nobody hardly knows who I am anymore. Uh, There's always that one chance that someone will recognize me as... Prince Jonathan! Oh, dear. Your Highness. Um, yes? I'm, uh, Katie Vienna, WYED-TV, Channel 13. Can we assist you, ladies? Uh, yes, I just wanted to conduct a quick little interview with His Royal Highness. How did you know that we were going to be here with days ahead of the engagement? Oh, I'm doing a story to cover the new display at the Military Museum. I knew you would be in attendance, and since this is the only flight arriving from Basaria, I... I... You put two and two together. Exactly. I'm afraid that we're on a very tight schedule. I'm sure you'd understand. Well, of course. No, I completely understand. But it would just take a moment, and it would mean an awful lot to me. Would it? One moment. My gosh. I know I don't normally do this, but perhaps we... Sir... We have to go collect our luggage. We've got a car waiting in the red zone to go pick us up and take us to the Hotel Clark. That's all the way in Midtown. There's no time for such things, especially not here in the middle of the airport. I must insist, sir. Mm -hmm. I know, but they're very pretty. You're right, as always. <sighs> but maybe we could arrange to meet in a more convenient time, if that's agreeable with you. Oh, are you, are you sure? We're already here. It would be so easy. I'm afraid that that would be quite impossible. Did I mention it would mean an awful lot to me? Yes. Yes, you did. But as Lewis reminds me, we have a schedule. But I promise to make the time for you. But later. Later, like, later, later? Or later, like, later tonight? Maybe around dinner time? You know, nothing would bring me greater pleasure. We will contact you through your television station. Okay. Until then. Oh. Miss Katie. Please excuse me. <laughs> Mom. Mm -hmm. A little old fashioned, but I'll take it. What a uh, looker. <laughs> he certainly is. For a prince, I mean. Okay, so now what? Well, we can't afford to keep the ball in their court, so we move immediately to plan B. Come on. I was afraid you'd say that. Starting Monday on Good Day to You, you'll be treated to an entire week of holiday reruns featuring me, Carol Jordan. It's my gift to you. Happy holidays from WYED. Is that what television presenters in America sound like? She sounds so disingenuous. Mm. And that Christmas time, sir. WYED? Isn't that the TV station that the woman at the airport mentioned? Yes. Uh, certainly sounds familiar, sir. Katie, what are we going to do now? I have an idea. What are you up to? You'll see. All right. That guy said that they were staying at the Hotel Clark. There we are. All right. Now we just gotta figure out what room our prince would be in. How could you possibly know that? Well, it's simple. He's obviously gonna stay in the largest suite that they have. There you go. Room 305. Bridal suite. The bridal suite? Yeah. It's the biggest room in the hotel. Ah. Uh, okay. Hi. Yes, could you please connect me to room 305? 
Thank you. Great American Christmas. Hello, Lewis speaking. Oh, good afternoon. This is Katie Vienna. We met at the airport. Ah, uh, yes, Miss Vienna, um, from the television station. That's right. Uh, I was just calling to follow up on the prince's offer to meet me for dinner this evening. Dinner with the prince this evening. I'm afraid that we already have a meeting scheduled for that time. Is it with another TV station? No, it's not. <laughs> Miss Vienna, this is Prince Jonathan. Why don't you come by around 8.30? We should be done by then. And we can discuss things. 8.30? De Paolo's Italiano. Do you know it? Everyone knows De Paolo's. That's an excellent choice. Very elegant. Wonderful. We'll see you then. I'm looking forward to it. Huh. Must I do everything myself? I can't believe you just did that. Marcy, this is my one shot at this, and I am not going to let it slip away. Oh, I have to go home and change. I suddenly have dinner plans. Hi, Mom. Hey, sweetie. I haven't heard from you in a while, so I thought I would give you a call and see how you're doing. I am doing great. I'm just getting ready to go out for a bit. Ooh, a dinner date? Kind of. Hmm, that sounds mysterious. Someone special? Well, Katie? It's nothing romantic, Mom, just business. Oh. That's too bad. I was thinking maybe if something develops, he will be the first to know. Oh, Katie, I hate to see you alone, especially at Christmas time. Your dad and I just want you to be happy. I am happy. I'm more than happy. I don't need a man to validate myself. I'm doing just fine on my own. Thank you. I know exactly what you're going to say. You have your career at the TV station, but honey, that is no substitute for a real life. I mean, come on, there's more to being happy than telling people how to adopt a homeless kitty. <laughs> you saw that? Well, of course, I see all your little bits whenever I can. It's the only way I get to see you lately. I know, I know. I miss you guys. Oh, I'm running late, OK? I'll call you guys later. All right. Bye. OK. Now, let's see what I can dig up on the kingdom of Vesaria. Yeah, a great recommendation. Thank you. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Gentlemen, I'll be back in a few minutes with our dessert menu. Please, please, take your time. We're in no hurry. Prince Jonathan, speaking on behalf of the museum's board of directors, I can tell you how much we appreciate you officiating the grand opening of our new display. It's my pleasure, James. I just wish I could do more. <laughs> Perhaps that could be arranged. If you really wanted to, there are still a lot of older veterans who have nothing to look forward to this Christmas. Well, that is very sad. Yeah, but unfortunately, you know, my duties back home, you understand, it's a very busy time of year. Of course, just having your introduction at the museum is more than we could have ever hoped for. Your grandfather's story is impressive. We're ready to celebrate him and the brave men who served with him. The queen was extremely heartened when she received news of your ceremony honoring her father. As were we all, I can assure you. Sir, the meet and greet event preceding the ceremony has already generated a very large cash fund for veteran services. One my family plans to match dollar for dollar. You can't know how much that means to us and the men and women who risk everything for the freedoms we all now enjoy. There is nothing nobler. Now, sir. If you'll excuse me. You won't be staying for dessert? I'm sorry, no. As you say, it's a very busy time of year. Yeah, right. 
Until then. Until then. Hey, he probably has a Christmas party to attend. Tis the season, sir. And what I need is a little excitement in their life. Something to shake me out of this royal spiral that I've fallen mm. into. Well, do not despair, sir. Perhaps all that you desire is right around the next corner. Hello. Good evening, miss. You have reservations with us this evening. Oh, I, I don't. I'm just meeting someone. Sure, of course. May I take your coat, please? Oh, yes. Thank you so much. I watch you every day on TV. You're very good. Oh, thank you so much. Hmm. Oh, right on cue. Good evening. Good evening, Miss Fiana. Oh, please, you can call me Katie. Isn't that the girl who works at your station? It is. I wonder what she's doing here. Um, please, join us. Oh, thank you. Of course. So, how was dinner? Dinner was perfect. We were just perusing the dessert menu. Oh, isn't the food here amazing? Mm. Mm. Oh! <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers, Your Highness. <laughs> Please, call me Jonathan. Oh, I can't do that. I feel like that's not, um, proper. Um, well, Prince Jonathan, then? Prince Jonathan. <sighs> Sir, if you don't mind, I just remember something extremely pressing that requires my immediate attention. If you could excuse me. I could. <laughs> if you need anything at all, sir, please call me. I have your one number, miss. Madam. No, looks like you're all stuck with me. Okay. Just to warn you, I might talk your ear off. I'm fully prepared to take that risk. You see anything that you like? I do. Well, for me, the Christmas spirit is actually a belief in Jesus Christ and Scripture. So during the holiday season, that's in our family just another reason for us to focus not on ourselves, but on others. I think Christmas is always a reminder of helping those around you and not necessarily just always making it about you and separating your family from everyone. Always set time aside for others. An informal interview that would cover the dedication ceremony, your book, and your time here in the States leading up to it. Nothing heavy, just something positive and uplifting. How do you propose we achieve that? Well, we could start by talking about your book, and then your grandfather, and what all of that meant to you. Oh, and then the actual closing ceremony itself could be the closer. I don't know. I, I, I don't like talking about myself. I don't crave attention. Oh, I can respect that. And besides, I'd like to protect my exclusivity. Hmm. All right, so how shall we proceed? I was thinking I could pick you up tomorrow morning and take you around the city. We could get footage of you just being you. No agenda. I'm, I'm sorry, no, I don't like that. I don't like the idea of a cameraman following me around. It, 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 that's exactly the kind of attention I'm trying to avoid. Oh, no, no cameraman, just me and my phone. The quality I can get on these things these days is incredible. I do it all the time. So you're saying it would just be you and me? Yeah, just you and me. If that's all right, that is. Oh, uh, yes. Yes, it's perfect. What, what station did you say this is for? W-Y-E-D. 
the big 13. <laughs> yes, that's right. That's right, I see. Well, they're lucky to have you working on this. Thank you. Wish they only knew. So tomorrow morning, 11 a.m.? Yes. Have a wonderful night, Katie. Thank you. You too, Your Highness. Good night. Uh, Prince Jonathan. Desired. It's very interesting. Not too sugary, not too sweet. Get off it, Lewis. <laughs> you sound like my mother clucking away like an old hen. I sound like the queen clucking like an old hen. Really? You're too kind, sir. I had a nice time. Okay, it was a great time. You know what, Lewis? I had a wonderful time, and there's nothing wrong with that. Nothing, sir. Miss Katie Viana, what a remarkable young lady. Very committed, very dedicated. And very beautiful, sir. Did you come to some sort of arrangement? Perhaps, perhaps. She's going to chauffeur me around tomorrow, see what happens. Hmm. And what time are we going to be leaving? Uh, we aren't going anywhere. I won't be needing a chaperone, thank you. But you'll be by yourselves. What if something was to happen to you? That's exactly the reason I don't want you skulking about. But, sir... Uh... Good night, Lewis. Good night, sir. Well, here's the playlist for next week's shows. We're going to start with the old tapes and work straight through to the new episodes. Understood. This is television, kiddo. TV never sleeps. And if Carol Jordan thinks she can just disappear on vacation during our Christmas rating sweeps, well, I'd be happy to accommodate her. Control room. Yeah, he's here. OK. Who's that? That was Carol Jordan. She's looking for you. Now in the building? Now. Oh, Carol! <laughs> uh, we, we were just previewing some of your old shows. The tapes are in excellent condition. Yes, they are. I'll... <laughs> that is a really great one. Well, they're all great, but that one is a particular favorite. Well, I'm glad you approve, but what are you doing here? I thought you were on vacation. I am, but I, I saw something at dinner last night that got me to thinking. Is there any type in, of an official event that we may be missing? An unveiling of sorts? Uh, an unveiling? I'm not sure. A ribbon cutting with a visiting celebrity, perhaps a prince or a duke or something? Well, honestly, I, I don't know. Well, it's your job to find out. I was thinking how great a holiday primetime special would be for next week. Just picture me with a one-on-one -on -one interview in depth the prince. It's all the rage. I could win an Emmy. Finally. <laughs> yeah. Um, there's only one problem. You're not working next week. You're on vacation, Carol. Look, you find me a prince, I'll find the time. Got it? Got it. Yeah. Have you spoken to Katie? No, no. Not me. Excuse me. Yeah. What am I going to do now? Hello? Katie, I need to talk to you. Oh, okay, Marcy, but I don't have a lot of time. I'm expecting the prince in any minute. Yeah, that, that's what I need to talk to you about. She's on to us. What are you talking about? Who's on to us? Carol Jordan. She just showed up here and, and she knows about the prince. Or at least she thinks she does. I thought she was on vacation. Yeah, she is. Something must have tipped her off. She's not totally sure yet, though. Well, what did you tell her? I, I didn't say anything. Oh, well, then it's perfect. All you have to do is drag your feet. Okay, Katie, drag my feet. 
Got it. If you don't know, you don't know. Listen, there is no way I'm giving this story to Carol Jordan. Thank you, Neil. Merry Christmas, sir. Merry Christmas. Oh, I gotta go. My princess just arrived. I'll call you later, Mercy. Okay, bye. Marcy? <laughs> yes, sir. Katie having any luck with that interview? Um, I really can't say, but I, I know she's trying. Good, good. Well, if she does manage to pull it off, you tell her to keep it a secret, okay? Until she talks to me. Yes, sir. It's Jonathan. Oh, good morning, Katie. Right on time. And you look lovely today. Oh, thank you. That's very kind. So what shall we do today? Well, I have a few ideas, if you're ready. Indeed I am. I'll follow your lead. Right this way? Merry Christmas from all of us here at Great American Family. in 1943 and is the last of the Fletcher-class destroyers, the largest World War II ship of its kind. Ah, uh, yes, of course. I'm sorry. I know you already know that because the description of it in your book was so fascinating. I mean, I, it really felt like I was right there in the middle of all the action. Thank you. Yes, but about the book... It was so vivid and <sighs> such a beautiful tribute to your grandfather who just seemed like such a remarkable man. Yes. Yes, he was. He was my mother's father. He was not king, of course. He was a duke. Sadly, I never had a chance to meet him. Hmm. You know, I read in your book that every male subject in Basaria is required to serve for two years? That is correct. But it's done willingly. Nobody's forced to serve. The monarchy believes that it instills patriotism and national pride, and the population seems to agree. So no matter what level of society you hail from, when it's time to serve, you report. And how did you spend your two years of service? Ah, well, I spent my time in the Royal Signals, communications. It's very humbling. Ooh. You know, I loved the chapter in your book about how your grandfather was rescued on this very ship, and how he saved all of those lives on Christmas Eve before tragically losing his own. Yes, he was a great man. He really was. You know, I, I learned so much about myself in that book. Writing as therapy, I, I love that. That's a great angle. If you only knew. You know, why don't we get some shots of you? Maybe over here? Maybe looking at the ship. Yeah. Perfect, and let's let's have you standing up against the railing. It's okay. Now, let me uh, look up this way, and maybe up. Yeah, to the clouds. Yeah, now this is, this is it. And now let's have you looking at the ship with a sense of reverence. Reverence? Something like this? Yeah, just like that. <laughs> this is fun. And now, look towards me. It looks great. You know, Katie, it is freezing out. May you say we have a spot of lunch somewhere? I think I know just the spot. Come on. Thank, Thank you. you. Can you keep hot chocolate? What will they think of next? Mmm. <laughs> mmm. <laughs> right? That's delicious. <laughs> okay, now you gotta try this. Oh, uh, moving on. Yes! Uh, I did say that I was starving, but I feel guilt-ridden if I ate all of this. It, what is it? Will you trust me? And you don't have to eat all of it. Just let the ambiance soak in. It's the best beef on Weck in town. A beefy wreck. <laughs> no. <laughs> beef on Weck. It's roast beef on a Kimmelweck roll. Don't analyze it. Just put some horseradish on it. <sighs> Horseradish. But you enjoy living dangerously, don't you? 
Perhaps. Okay. So. Mm-hmm. Is that enough? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just dive in. Go for it. All right. Okay. Mmm. Isn't it good? Katie, that is that is outstanding. I wouldn't steer you wrong. You know, I truly believe that. And I have to say, I can't wait to finish our interview. I'm really looking forward to it. I have this feeling that it's going to be like no other interview that I've done before. I, I feel as though I, I can talk to you, you know, honestly. Not like the others that I've done in the past. Just you and I, the... I feel like we're two old friends chatting. I'm so glad you feel that way. That means a lot. It means that I feel like I can be real. You know, Katie, I, I don't get to open up to very many people. I can't afford to. There's something that's very tempting for me to confide in you about. That's perfect. That's exactly the type of story I'm looking for, something from the heart. So no pretenses? No pretenses. All right, ready oh, for this? Yes, <clears throat> yeah. thank you. There's more? <laughs> there is. Right, so, uh, so what is this? These are our Christmas stockings. We decorate them with our names and hang them on the walls with everyone else's. All the customers do them. That is so fun. <laughs> <laughs> Never done anything like that. Great, so we just we just write our name in glitter and then decorate it. Mm -hmm. And then right before we leave, we hand them in and they hang them up for us. There you go. <laughs> So, so how long have you been engaged? Engaged? In this particular line of work. Oh, right. Um, not very long. That's all I ever wanted to do, was just tell stories that made a difference. Try and make the world a better place. Well, I must confess, Miss Fiona, I... I am not that story, but I'm very grateful that you asked me to assist you on this journey. Well, I'm very glad you agreed. Oh, one sec. I have to take this, I'm sorry. Yes, of course. Hey. Hi, Mom. Uh, I'm kind of in the middle of something. Honey, it's your dad. know what to do. Mom, do you need help? Oh, I don't know. Honey, I'm, I'm just kind of at my wit's end right now, to be honest. Okay, all right, take it easy. I will drive up there and make sure you two get all squared away. Oh, sweetie. I would appreciate that so much, but I know how busy you are. Can you get away? Of course I can. Just give me a few hours and I will be there. I appreciate that so much. Okay, I'll see you when you get here. Oh, can you please pick up something for me on the way? Okay, yes, I can do that. See you soon. <sighs> Sorry. Trouble at home? It's my dad. I, he fell off a ladder. It sounds serious. Well, I'm not sure yet. He, he's so stubborn and he refuses to go to the hospital. I'm afraid I have to go drive up there. It's about 60 miles away. Yes, of course. I'll drop you back off at the hotel. Absolutely not. I wouldn't hear it. What? Kitty, we're wasting valuable time. And I set aside my entire day to spend with you. So I'll go along, if you don't mind, of course. No, of course that's all right. But I'm, are you sure? 
My parents live in Oakmore. It's pretty far away. Yes, I'm sure. And we must make haste. So why don't you go get the car and I'll take care of this. They must be very proud and impressed by everything that you've done. It can't be easy to achieve what you have. I imagine it takes years of work to move up the ladder in your position. Oh, well, you know how it is. They're supportive, but not overly impressed. Yes, I know that feeling all too well. <laughs> I can only imagine how exciting the life of a prince must be. Uh, not as much as you might think. I, I was deprived of so many things growing up. No sports teams. I didn't even have a bicycle. <laughs> In fear that I might get hurt. Uh, just my entire life is... It's always been under a microscope. Rarely have any private time to myself. Which is why I've really enjoyed being alone with you. You're very kind. But I do have my reasons for wanting to keep you all to myself. Oh, um, yes, no, I know. <laughs> I know you have a story to create. <clears throat> but I'm having fun, nonetheless. Most of the ladies I meet, they have far more nefarious reasons for wanting to keep me all to themselves. But really, Katie, I really am enjoying myself. Well, you and I aren't done here yet. I do feel terrible for dragging you all the way out to Oakmore. I promise to try and make it as painless as possible. You do what you need to do. I'm gonna head back when you're ready. Thank you, Prince. I just really hope you don't regret this. some of Dad's favorite cookies and a box of tea. Helps him sleep. Oh, what a wonderful little snow globe town. Hey, something out of an old movie. <laughs> yeah, a town where time stood still. I'm sure Vasaria has its fair share of small little villages like this. Oh, indeed it does. I'd love to show them to you sometime. Um, if you ever find yourself up my way, of course. I would love that. It's right in here. Yes. Hey, Merry Christmas, Katie. Oh, hey, Don. Merry Christmas. I haven't seen you in a while. I know. I've been busy. I bet. I saw you on TV. Oh, uh, thank you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> this is my friend, um... Jonathan. Uh, pleasure to meet you. Wonderful to meet you. Uh, listen, Don, I need to pick up some Christmas cookies for my mom. Uh, and also, where do you keep your boxes of tea? Um, two aisles over... You know what? Just follow me. Here is your tea, and there are your cookies. Thank you. Is everything all right, Don? You seem a bit frazzled. It's my Santa Claus. His car broke down, and he's running behind. And the kids are getting really anxious. Oh, I'd imagine they would be. Do you happen to have the Santa costume here? Yeah, we keep it in the back. You're not thinking of... Why not? Seriously. Sure. But, but only if we could spare the time. Well, my mother isn't expecting me for another hour or so. Mr. Don, consider me at your service. <laughs> this is great. Come on in the back. It's cold out there. Oh, we have so many children. Oh, who's 
first, first. <laughs> right here. What is your name? Leah. Leah. What would you like for Christmas? A baby doll. A baby doll? Well, keep being a good girl, and Santa's going to bring you a new baby doll. <laughs> Merry Christmas! <laughs> Where'd you find him? He's a natural. He certainly is. <laughs> I can't even tell who's having more fun. <laughs> <laughs> who's next? <laughs> what is your name? Tommy. Tommy? That's a strong name, Tommy. What would you like for Christmas? A bicycle? You don't already have a bicycle. <laughs> oh, well, thank goodness it's Christmas. Do you have a special bike in mind? Yes, is it here? <laughs> Where is it? Oh, it's right there. That is a very nice bicycle. No, no. Oh. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh. Uh, that is a very, very nice bicycle, Tommy. I'm going to have to think about it. You have been very nice. A very good boy? <laughs> hmm, but we can't always get what we want. I know you can do it. You're Santa Claus. Please. <sighs> I am Santa Claus. Aren't I? I feel so bad for Mrs. Reed. Her husband died last year. I'm afraid Tommy's in for a disappointment. But well, I think perhaps not. Hold on, guys. Hold on, hold on. Hey, that's for you. <laughs> Gee, thanks! You? And mom, this is for you. Special <gasps> Thank delivery you so from much. Santa. Why not? I am Santa Claus, after all. You guys, have a Merry Christmas. Thank okay? you. You too. Thank you. All right. Shall we? Hey, Candace, buckle up. to warn you, my mom might talk your ear off. Really? Yeah. <laughs> well, she takes after me. <laughs> oh, and we might want to avoid mentioning you being a prince and all that. Why is that? Well, she might freak out. And besides, she's always trying to marry me off. But, well, we can't have that now, can we? Don't say I didn't warn you. <laughs> I brought the tea and Christmas cookies you asked for. Oh, I didn't realize we had company. Oh, right. Uh, um, Mom, this is Jonathan. We were having lunch when you called, and he offered to keep me company. <laughs> My apologies. It's a pleasure to meet you, Ms. Fiona. My goodness, you're just as beautiful as your daughter. <laughs> Please, uh, just call me Celeste. And welcome to our home. It's lovely, thank you. Thank you. How's Dad? Oh, grumpy, as usual. But the doctor says he will live. What is he doing upstairs? I don't know. <laughs> you know your dad, he's so stubborn. There was no way that he was going to be laid up in the living room. Well, hopefully this will calm him down a bit. If you don't mind, I'm gonna check in with Lewis. He wears something fierce about me. Oh, of course. The living room's right through there if you want. Wonderful, thank you. Please excuse me. Of course. My, my. Mother, don't start. 
But he is so handsome. And that accent. We are doing a story together, and there's nothing more to it. Are you sure? I'm sure. I saw the way he was looking at you. I wish. Honey, a mother knows these things. It will all make sense in the end. Trust me. I do trust you. I just want everything to work out for you. It will. All good on my end. Great. I'm gonna go check on Dad. Okay. <laughs> just make sure that he doesn't bite your head off. I will. <laughs> Jonathan, uh, may I offer you a cup of tea? Oh, yes, I'd be most grateful. Uh, regular or peppermint? Peppermint, <laughs> please. Papi? Come in. Hola, papi, como te sientes? Hola, mi amor, ay, más o menos. Ay. So, she called in the cavalry, huh? Oh, I've been reduced to the cavalry. No, no, you've been upgraded to the cavalry. What? <laughs> <laughs> ah, uh, you shouldn't have come all the way here. I'm sure you have important things to be doing. Well, nothing's more important than checking in on you. You want to tell me how it happened? Oh, come on. Don't act like your mother didn't give you already a blow-by-blow of the whole affair. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just say there's not going to be any dancing for me this New Year's Eve. Well, I knew you hated dancing. I didn't think you'd go this far to get out of it. <laughs> Still the comedian, huh? Mm -hmm. no, but seriously, thanks for coming. Of course. She must have been the cutest child. <laughs> and you both must be very proud of her. Oh, yes, we are. We're very proud. Mm. Well, I've only known her for a short while, but I've grown quite fond of her. Really? Well, she's... Single, you know. Oh. <laughs> I'm sure Katie has her fair share of suitors. Well, you would be surprised. She is very willful. She will not take no for an answer. Uh, she's headstrong that way. When she gets an idea, she just... Well... <laughs> you know. A lot of men don't like that in a woman. Oh, yes. Well, I find her absolutely fascinating. I've never met another woman like her. She takes after her father. More tea? Or maybe a cookie? Hmm. Just move it to the right side. Yeah, right there. Yeah, for big camera. Yeah, that'll be good. <sighs> yes, Jared? Have you heard from Katie? Not yet, sir, but I expect to hear from her soon. Okay. Well, when you do, could you give her a message for me? Of course. You tell her that if I don't have that interview footage by the end of the day today, I won't be needing it at all. You won't be needing it? Marcy, it's Christmas. Our holiday programming season is booked solid. You know that. Yes, of course. Now, I created this special space for Katie's story. And I've got the footage right away, like right now. It won't be time to edit it for the available slot. Understood. I'll, I'll, um, I'll try to locate her. Now, please, help me out. Like, let's go. Well, now that you see me, you can head back. You trying to get rid of me already? No, I just don't like the idea of you driving those icy roads after dark. One of us laid up in bed is enough. <laughs> I know, but I came with a friend, so don't worry. I'll be fine. A friend? Is that that girl, Marcy? No, it's a him. But we're just doing a project together. Don't get any funny ideas. Ideas? Who, me? What? <laughs> <laughs> knock, knock. Yeah. Sorry to intrude. Your mother insisted that I bring up some tea and cookies for your father. Well, you came to the right place. <laughs> Papi, this is Jonathan. Good afternoon, sir. Come in, son. Oh, thank you. Careful, it's hot. Oh, toma, Papi. Gracias, corazón. Well, if Mom's making tea, then I'm going to grab a cup myself. OK. Um, would you like a cookie? No, that's just, you can put them over there. So you served 
and with great honor. I did my part when they called on me. <laughs> with all due respect, sir, they don't hand out Purple Hearts for doing nothing. <laughs> no, you get one for getting shot three times and leaving to tell about it. You were shot three times? Yeah. I barely felt a thing at first, but I knew I had to make my move and help my bodies that were pinned down. And you succeeded? I did. I mean, everybody got out alive. I'm not gonna kid you, it hurt a lot after the adrenaline or shock or whatever we're off. <laughs> Those boys ended up carrying me out. <laughs> uh, it's a shame to think so many old vets find themselves alone at Christmas time. Mom and I usually go out and try to cheer them up, but now fate stepped in to trip me up. Still, sir, you, you sacrificed yourself in a way that I will never know. I really am truly grateful and humbled to be in your presence. Ah, no, don't be. Eight years in the army, and it's a string of worn-out Christmas lights that finally did me in. <laughs> it's embarrassing. <laughs> no, I beg to differ, sir. <laughs> you friend of Katie's? Yes. Good. Just make sure she gets back home safely. Of course. Of that, you can count on it. And if you have any other interest in her, there's one thing you need to know. Um, what? Uh, okay, yes. That one's a handful. When she's got something on her mind, nothing will stop her. So if you can't handle that sort of thing, you better keep looking. Uh, yes. Understood. Jonathan? I'm all set up for you downstairs. <clears throat> yes, of course. It was very nice, very nice talking with you. Merry Christmas. Same to you, fella. It's a tawe, no, eh? You're safe, papi. Mr. Viano, could I, could I ask you an advice on something? Sure, if I can ask a favor of you. Merry Christmas. Pleasure to be invited to the opening of the new museum display, honoring the brave men and women who fought alongside my grandfather all those years ago to preserve the freedoms we hold so dear. An amazing tale of courage, told vividly in your new book, A Noble Front. Exactly, but... I have a confession that I need to make, something that I'm not very proud of about the book. Available stateside next January. Huh. Yes, indeed. It is a very inspiring story of others, much greater than myself. Your grandfather was a true patriot. Please, he deserves better than this. To be completely honest, I didn't write the book, not a word. It was written for me. I'm sorry, what? The book is the work of a ghostwriter, someone who interviewed me and then wrote it as if I had done so myself. Okay, um, maybe we don't need to include that little bit, but um, off the record, may I ask why? Uh, well, as you know, the book's proceeds are for my charity, which is a very good one. And I just didn't feel as though I had the time to write it, which was my mistake. So like many royals before me, I agreed to put up the shrade. To provide for a noble cause. But here now, after speaking with your father, I feel dishonest promoting it as my own. I'm sorry if I've let you down. No, no, you didn't let me down. I admire your honesty. But perhaps we should skip over that bit for this. What you've been able to accomplish for others is a good thing, with many more good things to come. And I feel like that should be the focus of this piece. Yes, of course. I just didn't want to sit here and not be completely honest with you. That means something to me. All right, well. Oh. Is everything okay? Uh, 
Yes, it's it's just Marcy. Uh, everything's fine. Good. Well, I think I have all the footage I need, and it is getting late, so. Um... So we should head home. Yes. Yeah. I just need to upload the footage to Marcy so she can start breaking it down, but it should only take a few minutes. Of course. I'll go say goodbye to your pet. Okay. Okay. Katie, what's going on? I haven't heard from you all day. I know, I'm sorry. I had to run home for a bit. My dad had an accident. Nothing serious, he's fine. But I got the interview. Really? You got the prince on camera? That's fantastic. Jared has been all over me about this. I know, I know. I'm uploading the footage to our drop space right now. Okay, great. I will connect the shuttle drive. Perfect. Okay, now, Marcy, I need you to take a look, trim the fat, and tell me what we've got. I think I have the running time, but I'm not sure. You got it. Jared is going to love this. Great. Thanks, Marcy. You bet. My very own special at last. <laughs> well, here we are. Here we are. Thank you again for walking me. It's very unnecessary. I think you would have done the same for me. <laughs> Touche. And thank you for everything today. I, we really did do quite a lot. Yes, we did. <laughs> and I enjoyed every moment of it. I especially like meeting your parents. I can see where you get your sense of integrity from. Thank you. Um, would, would you like to come inside for some hot chocolate? I really shouldn't. I, I have a lot of work to do. Right, of course. Of course, absolutely. Uh, it just feels like we're always saying goodbye on some sidewalk somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> but if you insist. Excuse me, sir. What are you doing out here? It's cold. <laughs> Just grabbing some fresh air. <laughs> well, it's freezing. Yes, it is. Uh, I'll see you inside. Thank you. Okay. <sighs> I, I really should go. Um, uh, wait, wait, Kitty. Um, so, I was thinking, uh, you know, perhaps uh, t tomorrow? Uh, maybe you can help me with a small speech that I'm preparing for the ceremony. Me? Yes, it would just be, you know, some minor editing. Make sure it's not too stuffy. I could really use your help. I, I would love to, if that's what you want. Yes, maybe we could go back to that cafe, finish the meal we started. You liked it? <laughs> Honestly, I'm more interested to see where our Christmas stockings ended up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we could do that. Well, then it's a date. It's a date? Good night, Prince. <laughs> Nice. Okay. <laughs> Good evening, Lewis. Please. Good evening, sir. Well, you certainly made a day of it. Yes. It was quite thought provoking, too. Thought provoking, how so? Believe it or not. I found a young lady who's trustworthy and she doesn't throw herself at me. Disappointed? Actually, no. No, I'm not. Today was a day full of detours and a bit of self-reflection. Self-reflection? Then I take it it was considered productive, sir. Indeed. Right. Well, I have assembled our itinerary for the museum dedication. It is the day after tomorrow, and then we will return home back to Fazaria just in time for the Royal Ball, which will no doubt please your highness. You know, Lewis, I'm not sure what pleases me anymore. Well, it will certainly please the Queen. She's been ringing all day. Perhaps it's time I need to rethink my priorities. 
You'll have plenty of time to rethink them on the plane back home, sir. Will I? I wonder. Listen up, Lewis. There's something very important that I need you to do. I am all ears, sir. We love infant organizers and finish with a short statement praising the veterans for all their efforts. I think you did a great job. It's easy and hits all the points that you want to make. I just had a few minor things you might want to take a look at, but other than that, well done. Just beautiful. Good. So I will get this all typed up and ready for your speech tomorrow. I was referring to you. You're absolutely beautiful. I'm sure I don't hold a candle to all the women in this area. I mean, you're royalty, and I'm just, well, you know, normal. <laughs> Katie, they don't hold a candle to you, and neither does this. What is it? Merry Christmas, Katie. <sighs> wow. There you are. It's beautiful. Thank you. Oh. Do you need to take that? It's my boss. But I can call him back. No, 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 please. Please take the call. Could be important. I'll be right back. Sir. Lewis, what are you doing here? We haven't been taking my calls. What else should I do? Hey, Jared, what's up? Well, I wanted to let you know that I've been watching the interview footage that you sent Marcy, and it's just excellent. Yeah? You like it? <laughs> like it. I love it. We're editing now. Now? But I have to see it first. All you have is the raw, uncut footage. I have a very specific order I need the footage to appear in. Katie, Katie, you can see it all when you come in tomorrow. But in order to give it its proper push on such short notice, we're running a teaser on it tonight. A teaser? Tonight? When? On the next break, and every half hour after that. <laughs> That's incredible. Thank you. Don't thank me. You earned it. I did my best. Your best turned out to be pretty darn great. And we're going to talk again next week about you having your own show. Looks like you may have what it takes after all. Talk later. Thank you, Jared. Bye. Um, so I managed to assemble everything that you requested. Perfect. I knew I could count on you. But the Queen, she continues to be very insistent on speaking to you. Don't worry about my mother. I'll call her. Okay? I intend to set the record straight about my future bride. I want to put this whole absurd story to rest once and for all. And perhaps sooner rather than later, sir, as your fiance has also been trying to reach you. My fiance. <laughs> Rosalind. Uh, all right, yes, I will call her soon too. We'll have a little chat. Okay. Naturally, she's just concerned about you being out of touch, she worries about your well-being, and she doesn't understand the silence. Uh, of course she doesn't understand my silence, but you do. So the next time my fiancé calls, just give her a proper excuse. As you wish, sir. Yes, let's meet back at the hotel. As you wish, sir. Everything okay at work? Yeah. They loved the interview. You were, you were a hit. They uh, loved the interview. That's wonderful. Are we making more stockings? Yeah, you forgot to make one. For whom? You forgot to make one for Rosalind, your fiance. Uh Oh, um, <laughs> Katie, I can explain. You don't need to explain anything. You didn't do anything wrong. It's, it's on me, really. Katie, Katie. Mm. No, it's fine. I, I just, uh, because I got caught up in what felt like a daydream. I can't tell if it's you were just that charming or I was just that lonely. But 
Either way, I made a mistake. I thought you cared about me, and I was wrong. So that's on me. No, 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 no. There is a perfectly good explanation for this. You don't need to say anything. I'm fine. YED exclusive interview with Prince Jonathan of Azaria. I have a confession that I need to make, uh, something that I'm not very proud of. What is the dark secret the Prince of Azaria has been hiding? Find out this and more tomorrow night at 8 p.m. on WYED TV's special holiday interview featuring Katie Viana. Oh, no. Oh, no. What, what did you do? No, I, I didn't do that. I trusted you. It wasn't me. This is unbelievable. No, I... I promise that wasn't me. I take it she heard. Yes, she heard. I'm so sorry, sir. I should not have spoke of sensitive matter in such a public place. But no, please stop. Please don't blame yourself, Lewis. I knew that I was falling in love with her, but I had no idea how she felt about me. And now that I do, well, just everything is a muddle. But did you see the spot they ran for my interview? I did, sir. It's been running regularly. Just how could she do such a thing? Well, perhaps she didn't. It seemed that the two of you were constantly together. When would she have found the time or the opportunity? I don't know. <sighs> she says she didn't do it. But how can I trust her now? This a tangled web that won't be easily untangled, sir. I don't even know where to start. Well, of course you don't. You're from two different worlds. I believe they call it being star-crossed. Just wasn't meant to be. You're a prince and she's a television presenter. How could you possibly have made that work? I don't know, but I was willing to, to try. Right now, I just don't know what to do. We came here to honor your grandfather. So perhaps we do just that, and then we return home with all due haste. I don't know if I can. You rest assured, sir. I will do anything to help you. All right, thank you. Good afternoon. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Thank you for coming. It's my pleasure. Hi. I can't begin to tell you how sorry I am, sir. I don't wish to talk about it, if you don't mind. I came here to open the display, and that's what I plan on doing. Then it's probably best that we just get on with it then. Right. Louis, aren't you so conflicted? Conflicted in what way? In pangs of what ifs or maybes? Might things have been different then? I don't know. It just seems so pointless now. Of course, there's nothing you can do now, sir. We can't sort it out. What's done is done. It's water under the bridge. It's six feet under. It's kicking up the daisies. Okay, please, stop trying to cheer me up. Awful. Your Highness, I'm Jared Mathers, Katie's producer at WYED. And this is uh, Carol Jordan, our top on-air personality. Good afternoon, Your Highness. Uh, yes, uh, good day to you. We just wanted to tell you how excited we are about the piece that Katie did on you. Uh, she did an outstanding job. 
Yes, well, you're very lucky to have her. I couldn't agree with you more. I'm just, you know, sorry about the way the um, promo turned out. You're sorry? For what? Well, I'm afraid that the promo was created without consulting Katie first, and there were a couple of off-topic sound bites that shouldn't have been in there. Yeah, actually, it was my fault. I, I was just so excited that I, I, I guess I just moved too quickly for my own good. I see, and... And we won't be running the interview, at least the one that we promoted, but I really think you're gonna love it anyway. Such an honor to meet you. Your Highness, I... Katie really did an excellent job and couldn't have done better myself. But actually, I, I did sit down with her this morning and help her construct the piece into something that was worthy of the effort that she put in. Thank you. I'm relieved to hear that. And if it means anything at all, we're all very proud of Katie. She's getting her own show in prime time. Right after mine. Look at what a cat dragged in, sir. If you'll excuse me. Of course, sir. Your speech. I promised to type it up for you. Katie. I just didn't want to leave you hanging. Come on, Katie, let's go. Thank you for the interview. It really did mean a lot to me. If I may, sir, you told me that you wanted someone different, someone independent, and then you found her, and well, there she goes. Don't bet on it. Ladies and gentlemen, and now for the opening dedication, we would like to invite Prince Jonathan of Assyria to say a few words. You know what to do? Of course. Good afternoon. Thank you all for coming. I would especially like to thank the members of Legion of America for honoring us with your presence. <laughs> These surviving heroes are the reason we all stand here today. So please accept with my humble gratitude for all that you've done. Please. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Thank you. Thank Merry you. Christmas. Now, if I may be permitted, <clears throat> uh, I would like to reflect uh, for just a moment on this wonderful occasion. to be moving off script. And if I might, I'd like to say that since coming to America, there's so many things that I've become aware of that had never occurred to me before. I've learned of the struggle and sacrifice of those who gave everything so that we can stand here today as free people and celebrate their unselfish devotion to doing what's right. I'd also like to thank the staff and organizers of this incredible event. It's been very eye-opening, so thank you very much. 
I've learned humbleness, if I may be so bold to say, but I've discovered what courage and true love look like. And I've learned these lessons the hard way. I'm not one for speeches, but I am forever grateful for the opportunity you've presented me with here today. Thank you very much. Please enjoy the event. Straight ahead, sir. Katie, please, don't go. Why not? You did great in spite of me making a mess of everything. I'm sure you have a lot of hands to shake. No, 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 please, please. I'm sorry. I've, I've been a fool. I should have been honest with you straight away. This entire trip, it, it was strictly business. It was supposed to be a professional obligation. I had no idea, not even for a moment, that I would meet someone like you. What about your fiance? I don't have a fiance. I never did. It was a stunt that my mother concocted to try to keep people interested in the monarchy. The anticipation of a royal wedding. It was never going to happen. I don't love Rosalind. Never did. I barely know her. What are you trying to say? I'm trying to say that I love you, Kitty Viana. I love you. You love me? Yes. Now, could we please just have a fresh start? Give it a shot. Total honesty. Don't say anything. Please don't. Just listen to your heart. It knows that the answer is yes. Yes! <laughs> Katie, it would mean an awful lot to me. When you put it that way, I love you too, Prince Jonathan. সে পর পারে দিতে হবে পারি আধার কবরে একার বকি আমি অবশেষে পর পারে দিতে হবে পারি আধার কবরে একার বকি আমি দুনিয়ার মায়া সব চলে যাবে একদিন দুনিয়ার মায়া সব চলে যাবে একদিন দুনিয়া ছেড়ে চলে যাব একদিন মায়ারি বাদন ভেঙে যাবে একদিন এ দুনিয়া ছেড়ে চলে যাব একদিন মায়ারি বাদন ভেঙে যাবে একদিন আসসালামু আলাইকুম রহমতুল্লাহ মাশাল্লাহ অনেক সুন্দর একটা কথা বলেছ বসো তো দেখতে পাচ্ছেন তারা কিন্তু দুইজন অনেক ভালো করে কিন্তু দুইটা